Hi there, and here's your introduction on how to use Adobe Spark. Um, I've explained to you already about how to sign into the Adobe Creative Cloud Suite and just download it to your device. You can do this on mobile devices, on iPads, tablets, um, desktops, and you can have more than one version. Okay, so it's worth downloading it on all the devices you'll be using. You can see at the top of the page here, I've got it installed. So once I click on that, and I'm already signed in, and I've put a pretty little picture up there as well. So Adobe Spark is on the web. So it's a web-based one. You don't download this to your PC at all. Okay, so click on web, and there it is. And when I click to load Adobe Spark, it then takes me to my dashboard, I think that's the term for it, which shows all the different things I've made. Look, loads and loads and loads. I've spent hours at all of this stuff, and it's uh, completely fabulous. So there are three products all together. The main one is called Spark Page, and that's an internet page. So say, for example, if you want to create um, a health promotion leaflet, or an information sheet, or um, a reflective journal, or you want to write a story. So that's what you would create it in, Adobe um, Spark page, okay? And then sometimes, so you'll see here, look, I've got some, some um, pages already. So these are web pages. If I click onto that one, it'll open it up and you'll see exactly what it is. And as I scroll down, you can see all the stuff I've actually put in here, okay? Now, what your customers see, the people you send this to, is when you go into present mode. So if I click on present, it takes it to full screen and it shows the whole of your resource. So there's the top and you use your roller key to slide down the page. OK, so that's what you'll see embedded in Moodle sites. Or if you send the link to somebody, this is how they'll actually access it. OK, and this has all been created with um, Adobe Spark. So I'll just press escape to get out of this. Right. And to go back to your main dashboard all the time, you just need to click this SP. Look, once I put the cursor over it, it lights it up and there you're back on your dashboard. So the three things are either page, it's a web page. A post is just a static image. It's a, a, a picture. So you can either upload one of your own pictures or use this one. So I wanted to do something on consolidation and I thought, now what sums up consolidation for me? And I thought, right, mixing all the ingredients together. So I got that picture and I just put across the word consolidation. Okay, and you can save that as um, a Spark post. And the third thing that you can do is something called Spark Video. Okay, um, let me find, right, there's a Spark Video. And that's the third element of this. Now, Spark Post and Spark Video, once you've created them, you add them into your page. Okay, if I get rid of that, here you go. There's all the different pictures I've put in for the different bits of this video. Okay, but I'll explain to you how to do. So I'll go back to my main page again by clicking SP. So to create a new one from scratch, whether it's uh, um, page, post, or uh, video, just click on the blue button here. So that's to add a, a, a new one. Now, they give you some suggestions that you might want to use images like this, but I always just go straight, start from scratch. So go here and I'll say, I want to create a page. Now, this is where you start typing. So let's say I'm gonna call it your tester page and say it's by me. Now you can go into these at any time to change change all of this. When you see the little plus button at the bottom, that's everything you need to do to add more stuff. So when I click the button, it'll ask if I want to put a photo in. Now you can either upload your own photo, so if you click here, it will take you to your pictures package on whichever machine you're using, or there are a whole load of free Adobe films, um, uh, images that you can use. And uh, because these are free, they're, 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 they're copyright free, you can use these. So just try and think of an image. So I've called this a tester page. Um, let me see if I type in the word testing, what happens? Okay, look, all these are different free images that you can use. Okay, so I'm just going to choose one at random. Oh, says he, and then I want to go and find a nice pretty one. Okay, let me just, I don't know what that is. I can't that far. 
OK. And if I close that X, right, this bit of this. You can go back in and change this whenever you want to. OK, so once you start scrolling down, this little plus button comes up again. And each time it comes up, it gives you options. You can either put a photo in, which would be, um, again, one of your own photos, or choose for one of these free ones. And it'll put it in in the center of the screen. Or you can start writing text. So if I click on that, and look, you can have a big heading. So heading one, slightly smaller than two, or um, in inverted commas, or you can have bullet point numbers. And you can do bold and italics, but that's what you can do. You can't underline or anything else. You can hyperlink to things. I'll come back to that. And then you can decide where you're going to have it. OK, so let's if I say, um, OK. And I might think, oh, I want this to go in the centre of the page. I can click to do that. OK. If you want to split the page, this is uh, an introduction to Spark. It's now put it in as a new line. So I'd have to use again, make that big and centre it. But if you want to present, the present mode, that little plus goes. So this is all you see. This is the top of the page. And as you scroll down, you've got that. So it's missing all those plus signs. So when I press escape, that takes me back into the editing mode again. So if I plus, I can say, um, uh, I want to text. And this time, let me go for the inverted commas. You'll notice it's not giving me any options to change the font style. If you want that, you have to click this button up here that says Themes. And what that does, it changes the background that you're working on and it changes the font style. So you can't from that. Um, if you say, well, I want that sort of script, then you have to have this coloured background. So there you go. Look, it's changed it already and it's even made image look a different colour, okay, because it's superimposed um, a particular image here. Okay, you can choose different colours. Look, and that's put a big blue blob on there. So play around with it. Now, if I want to add a video in, you can either add a video that you've created in Spark, or you can upload a YouTube or a Vimeo image, but a uh, video. But you can't just upload something straight so if you've got a video already on your PC, open up a free YouTube account for yourself, save it on there, and if you click to the button that says unlink, then no one can find it. You can't save it as private because nobody at all would be able to see it, only you as the creator. So by default, when you go onto YouTube, it's automatically set to show this to public. So if the whole world searched for your theme tune, your, your your theme or your name, they'd find it. So the only way to hide it is call it unlink, unless you want people to find it. So then you put the YouTube account in, and when you press it, your little video will appear there. Okay, um, so so that's the way you put the video in. Other ways of putting photos in, instead of just putting one big photo in, you can have a photo grid, and that means you might want to put about half a dozen photos in. Upload the, the, the number of photos you want to, either from your own account. OK, so there, so it's upload a photo. You can either put your own in or find the free photo. Adobe Stock, you normally have to pay for. So these are free ones, OK? Um, so you can click there. You can put in a few photos. Let me just put a couple in here. OK, I'm just clicking any ones as they appear. OK, and then say Save. And there, what that's done, look, there's the top of my page. And as I scrolled, I've now put a photo grid in. OK, now you can add a caption to that if you will. And then once you get to the plus sign, this is where you add more things. If you go for the layout, the end one here, what that does, it'll put a photo on the one side. And then on the other side, you can te uh, uh, type in text. Uh, you might want to put in a button, and that links to to um, other 
websites, for example, or you can put in a video and you can put a few of these things. And if you put a lot in, it just means that this main photo there for most of the time as people are scrolling down but it stays as a static image okay if you want to swip, uh, swap side click the button and it swaps sides and if you want to move the image a bit when you click on it go for a focal point so you drag this thing to wherever you want the focal point to be okay so when you press save it's now shifted it so that's the way in which you move across the page OK, if ever you want to get rid of anything, you can just click it and say delete layout. And it's taken that out. But the one I totally love, it's called Glide Show. Now, on this, choose one or more images again. Let's say if I type in the word fun. OK, there, favor and fun. Lovely. And I'll say save. Now, what does it puts the image as the background but it gives you this um sort of opaque looking block here that you can add as much as you want to so let's text and if i want to make that bigger i can go to right h1 right then i might say uh, text Okay, and that saved as H. Then I might want to put in um, some bullet points in it. So you can do all of these different things. I'm just going to type goggle, gobbledygook now at the minute just to show you. Right, there you go. Right, one of those. Again, you can add in videos, you can add in more pictures. But the longer you make this, as people are scrolling down, so let me go to present mode. There you go, there was the earlier images, and when they're scrolling down, the big image comes up. But as you keep scrolling, all this happens. Imagine if this block was longer, you can embed videos into this, uh, put more text, add buttons, links to internet sites, whatever. So the longer you make it, the longer that background image stays there until you've finished. So when I press escape, I can now get out of this. OK, so I can click plus to add even more. Things, and you just make this page as long as you want to. And that's as easy as it is. When you go to present mode, when you scroll down to the bottom, it automatically put the credits in for the photos that you've used. So although you've, you've got copyright use of these, they're Creative Commons, but you still need to show who they've come from. So it'll automatically put this in at the bottom of your page. So you don't have to worry about that. OK, and that's as easy as it is. Now then, once you've finished, Spark keeps saved a few moments, so it's always saved. You're not going to lose anything. You can go back in at any point you want and things. That's great. And if I just click the SP button now, it'll show it as the most recent project I've done here. Once you've created a might be easier instead of looking for all that shows you everything you've done if you click the down arrow you can choose whether it's the web page whether it's a static image post or a video so here it is here's my latest one and to go back in i just click that again and it takes me in now once you want to share this with someone so if you want to send uh, send it as a link to somebody click on that and say publish and share you you might want other people to find you. It doesn't bother me if 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 people find me. So I say yes on. So if somebody searches for David Evans, they can find my. And I'll pick a category and say it's education, okay. And create. Now the longer you make your page, the longer it takes just to create that link. But this link never changes. This is the link you share out to people. So if I this to you um, or posted it on Facebook or Twitter or something look it gives you shorter versions if you click one of those but you can use this if I just copied and pasted that now into Twitter it would automatically show the image that I've created and it gives the link to the page it's as easy as that when you're embedding stuff into websites like I embed these into your Moodle sites rather than use that because that would just show us a long line and you'd have to click that link you uh, to the spark page what i do then i go for the embed code and if i right click on there and say 
then I paste the embed code in so that this whole page appears in your Moodle site rather than just that ugly looking link. Okay, but let me uh, let me just make a change here. If I just take out by me, right, that's all I've done is I've deleted something. So it's saving up here. Okay, and when I click SP, it takes me back to the um, uh, main page again. But it's changed since I that link. So what you need to do whenever you make change, if you go back in and make changes, for share, and when you say publish, it'll now tell me that the background has been changed. Okay, so if I've sent you this link for you to look at this page, and if I don't click the button here that says update the link, so when you look at it, you'll only see the original version I sent you. So if I click update the link now, all it's doing is it's updating the background for the same URL that you've been. So I don't have to keep getting new URLs. That that link stays the same all the time. What changes is the background that's added to it. So you must do that if you go back in and changes. Okay, that's on creating Spark Page. I hope you've enjoyed this, and I'll make two shorter ones now on Spark Post and Spark Video. Okay, thanks a lot. Bye.